Ever since time, man has longed to fly, to be free, to soar high above the trees like eagles, to view the earth in a way normally reserved for angels. If you have ever had this dream, we welcome you as Anglin Engineering introduces the Spacewalkers. At first glance, you'd think the 1930s had returned. Both single-seat and two-seat versions of the Spacewalkers help reconnect the 1990s to the 1930s to reproduce the fun and nostalgia of that era. Safety, simplicity, fun, and economy were the design goals. As you'll see in this tape, those goals have been fully obtained. We hope you enjoy it. Being a tail dragger type aircraft, much attention was paid to ground handling characteristics. The spacewalkers are so easy to taxi, you may find yourself hot rodding if you're not careful. Independent hydraulic brakes and steerable tailwheel are standard. Visibility is good in both aircraft. Heavy-duty spring shocks smooth out the bumps for a solid, positive rollout. Takeoff can be accomplished from tail down or up position. Ground roll is usually 300 to 500 feet, depending on load and runway conditions. Rotation is about 55, and climb out is 800 feet per minute at 75 to 80 miles per hour. The spacewalker zips along at 110 to 115 miles per hour with control responses you'd expect to find in an expensive competition type aircraft. Visibility in flight is superb in all directions. Stall occurs at 45 miles per hour and recovery is straightforward. The spacewalkers are able to fly out of just about any position you put them in. Approach feels good at 65 to 75 miles per hour. Sink rate is easily checked by a nudge on the throttle. The spacewalkers sit down very nicely and stay there. Landing roll is straight and requires little attention. It's easy enough to fly in and out of a 600 to 700 foot strip. If the word spacewalker was in the dictionary, the definition would be lots of fun. The ability to descend, climb, and maneuver without taking all day makes you want to drop down for that close look or that fast flyby. It's one of those airplanes that just doesn't like to fly straight. It's at home twisting, turning, diving, and climbing. However, if you can refrain from pushing and pulling on the stick and pedals, it'll take you places very comfortably.
Wheel landings are easy, and three points are almost automatic. The single place spacewalker is, without a doubt, the easiest real airplane to land there is. The two place takes a little more attention. From the ground or from the air, the spacewalkers are truly beautiful aircraft. This could have been a scene taken during the 30s and 40s, if spacewalkers had been around then. In fact, here's one pilot from that era who has flown the spacewalker and his comments. What do you think, Steve? Jesse, I think this is one of the finest flying machines that I've ever been in. And uh, that's a long time, old friend. I marked 50 years this summer. <laughs> 50 years in flying? Yeah. <laughs> I soloed in 1937, so when I say that it's good, I've flown just about everything, and it really is. After a fun-filled day of flying, the spacewalker can easily be disassembled and carried home for storage. Again, adding to the economy of owning a spacewalker. It's also nice to be able to walk out to the garage or workshop and tinker on those days you can't go flying. With all of the assets of the Spacewalker 1, there was one very serious defect in the design. This defect was pointed out to us by many would-be builders. That is, it was hard to get two people into that one little hole. So Jesse went to work to correct that problem. The cure was to be the Spacewalker 2. After the design was completed, Jesse and his son, Junior, began prototyping the Spacewalker II in modest facilities located in Rutherfordton, North Carolina. It wasn't long before the Spacewalker II began to take shape. All the details and parts seemed to just fall into place, as if they were meant to be built this way. The plans were to prototype the Spacewalker II in North Carolina. However, Hazel Zig and Maxie Hester of Sig Manufacturing in Iowa expressed interest in completing the first Spacewalker II and felt they could have it ready for the Lakeland Sun and Fun Show. Considering all the things to be done, it was decided that this was a good idea. They had already completed two spacewalker single places and had been flying them for several years, so they were well qualified to do the job. A spacewalker two component kit was built and shipped to Iowa, and Maxie immediately went to work. Much of the aircraft was still on the drawing board at that time. The pictures you see here show how well the spacewalker two is constructed and how the control system works. You'll also see how strong the fuselage is built and how some of the wood formers are installed. The Spacewalker II is fitted with a mechanically operated elevator trim that can be adjusted from either seat. All of the hinge points are fitted with pressed-in oil light bushings for long life and easy replacement. Structurally, the Spacewalker is as strong as some high competition type aircraft. Cockpits are deep and roomy enough to accommodate most oversized folks. The wings are basically wood with routed ribs of a quarter-inch marine plywood. Torsion 
drag, and anti-drag is controlled by jig-build steel trusses fitted between the huge main spar and the rear spar. The leading edge and aileron bay is covered with 1.5 millimeter plywood. The wing panel is finished off with a molded fiberglass wing tip. You can see how the trusses are attached. The wings are very strong and have been physically load tested to limits specified. Ailerons are actuated by a push-pull rod that extends along the front spar to a bell crank, which give the aileron a 42% differential. A series of 14-inch long steel plates make up the main attach point to the center main spar. Here you see the completed and covered wing panel with the three attach points and aileron control tube. Aileron used on the spacewalkers are of the full freeze type, all but eliminating adverse yaw. They are hinged at three points with double 4130 steel brackets. For that super aileron, the nose can be weighted for a full balanced system. No, we are not testing inverted flight. This simple rotating device makes covering and painting easier. Here you can also see some of the many attached tabs located at various points on the fuselage. Metal filler strips cover the gap between the center sections and the fuselage. You may not be able to paint yours this fast, but if you stay at it, it won't be long before your spacewalker begins to look like this. Heavy-duty spring shocks are used to smooth out rough fields and absorb some of those bad landings. 600 by 6 wheels and Cleveland brakes provide positive ground control. At this point in the construction, you can feel the adrenaline begin to flow. You know it won't be long now. We don't want to get lost. So let's put in enough gauges. The graceful lines of the spacewalker begin to show as assembly progresses. The horizontal stab is supported by two upper and two lower fly wires. The engine compartment can accommodate motors from 65 horsepower to 125 horsepower. This is a Continental 65 installation. The exhaust is turned in and down. Carburetor heat is taken off just as the stacks turn down. This particular aircraft uses the side mount throttle quadrant with dash mounted carburetor heat. Okay, this is looking better. One last look and we're going to close it up and take it for a ride. Almost the finished product. Complete enough to take around the patch. Yep, that's snow on the ground. A few last minute things to check out and we'll be on our way. A profile right out of the 30s. Everything seems to be in order. So let's go. This is the first taxi, and the only one prior to liftoff. It's not supposed to be that way.
it was immediately apparent that all systems were go. The wind was blowing hard that day, and it was kind of cool for test flying a new open cockpit aircraft. First touchdown was almost perfect. Not bad at all for this windy day. Yes, it turns this way and that way when you move the stick. Well, look whose turn it is now. Okay, Jesse, it's time to do your thing. Yeah. Tighten up your belt. Without trying, the spacewalker left the ground in about seven seconds after full throttle. Speed on climb out was between 70 to 80 miles per hour, showing 700 to 800 feet per minute. Roll rate was fantastic, and all controls responded super. As you can see, good control can be maintained at extremely slow speeds. Now it's Jesse's turn to land for the first time. Not too shabby for the first time. The spacewalker was fully completed, wheel pants and all, and flown 20.5 hours for inspection, then 1,200 miles to Lakeland. It was flown during the show and 1,200 miles back without any changes, modifications, or problems. It is truly a perfect airplane in design and construction. Here are some shots showing the completed aircraft and some flight shots taken after the aircraft returned from Lakeland in 1990.
We certainly hope you've enjoyed this tape, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Remember, if you've ever had that dream to fly, to be free, you can now do it in a spacewalker. Thank you.